Hello, beautiful people. Thank you so much if you are watching this video and you've waited for me for the last nearly two years to post another video on this channel. I'm so sorry I didn't get to update this channel as I'd planned. Um, things just got on top of me. Now, I would hope that experiencing the sort of symptoms and problems that I've had for the last two years, I'd come to you with some sort of confident way to fix this and tell you everything was perfect. But obviously, you guys, if you have these same problems, you already know that is not the case. That's not how this works. <laughs> so I'm just going to give you a bit of an update on what's been going on with me inside out for the last two years and hopefully get this channel up and running and give you guys my everyday on where I am, what's happening and how this affects daily life. So 2020 has been a challenging year for an awful lot of people with the global pandemic. There's no getting away from the fact that this has brought on a lot of stress for a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. And if you guys know anything about um, these sort of gut conditions that I'm sure a lot of you already have, if you're watching this video, stress is one of the main contributors to how bad you feel from the inside. <laughs> if you guys watch my other channel, you'll know that the last year and a half or two years for me has actually been kind of difficult. Uh, my grandfather died in the middle of 2019, which obviously caused a lot of stress for myself, my family. And then coming into 2020, we go into coronavirus lockdown. So in general, the last two years have kind of been this roller coaster of stress, which does not help the insides if you have um, hiatus hernia, if you have IBS, if you have any internal gut problems, a lot of this is aggravated by stress. As much as I'd like to say, this is all great, it's all been good, it really kind of hasn't. Um, I'd say this year in particular, uh, during the first lockdown that we had in the UK, I had uh, what I can call a major event um, with regards to my insides. We were out walking, um, on the way back I sort of got this pain feeling in my chest. Now, if you guys know and you have this similar thing, you you do get these sort of pains in your body, anywhere from your shoulders to your hips, um, periodically. So it's not usually something you worry about, not necessarily something you think could be something else. You kind of inside know that it's something to do with your gut. So I got this pain in my shoulders, in my chest in general, sort of an ache. Um, but it was a single point and it was a sharp, almost as if you needed to massage an area. I couldn't get rid of it. And then following that for about two and a half to three hours, I had this tremendous feeling of pressure from the belly button upwards right the way up to my shoulders. I could hardly breathe. I couldn't catch my breath. I couldn't sit comfortably. My heart was pounding. I was sweating. I was cold. I had these shivers. I genuinely felt like I was having a heart attack. But I just figured because I'd had this sort of thing before and I was still here, everything was fine. It was just a stomach thing that I was going through. Well, the following day, I contacted the doctors and everything now goes through this um, sort of online form that you fill in. So I filled in my symptoms on this online form and I didn't get put through to an appointment. It immediately flashed up on screen and said, go to the emergency room because these are the symptoms of a female heart attack. So I couldn't get through to book an appointment on this online form because it was telling me that I needed to go to the emergency room. Well, this was the following morning, so obviously it wasn't an option. I'd survived the night. <laughs> I wasn't going to the emergency room because at the time I wasn't having an emergency problem. So I actually managed to phone the doctors in the end, and obviously this is during lockdown. Everything's shut down. You can't go in. You can't see anyone. This is the way things are. Anyway, um, again, they said the same sort of thing. Well, everything I looked at said I should have gone to the emergency room at the time. So they had me in the following day for an EKG, which measures the electrical signals in your heart to try and see if there's anything wrong. Well, in general, if you've had any sort of cardiac event, the following day, I'm not sure how much that shows. But anyway, everything was normal, as I'd expected it to be. But it was one of those events that really kind of took the wind out of me and then made me nervous to do other things. Well, the following few days, my 
whole sort of chest area was boiling hot, felt like it was burning from the insides out. So I presumed again, it's sort of acid reflux related. And then for the two weeks after that, I could basically eat nothing. <laughs> there was nothing that I could put in me that would make me feel any good. So every evening for the next two weeks straight, I was really having a really rough time. And obviously in general for months on end, um, you do have general symptoms, but you sort of get used to um, feeling kind of rough. And then every now and again, you get an additional flare up on top of that, which really takes it out of you and really frightens you to the point that you don't know whether there's something seriously wrong with you or not. Now, prior to that, um, in the previous year, in 2019, after the death of my grandfather, I'd say during that time when he was ill and later that year, I'd been experiencing a lot of gut problems. Um, and this, these were problems that I hadn't had before. So it was a pain in my sort of shoulders and across the top of my back that I couldn't get rid of. Um, so I went for x-rays to see if there was anything wrong there. I had a series of other blood tests. This was all bo uh, before coronavirus. And then I had further symptoms such as um, pain in the front, uh, sort of under my ribs downwards, um, pain in the center, right under the sort of breastbone, um, and a little bit further down from there between the belly button and the breastbone as well. And it was sort of a full feeling as if there was something in there, something growing. So I've had no end of tests this year, blood tests and x-rays and all sorts of prodding and poking around in 2019. And um, again, no results. Now I'm always both pleased and displeased when I get results from the doctors that don't show any problems, because obviously the frustrations that you deal with not knowing what's wrong with you. And then because medically there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with you, um, not knowing then how to fix those things, yet dealing with it every single day is really debilitating, wearing and frustrating. And obviously this does um, contribute to sort of a mental health aspect of it as well. Just being able to get over that and understand that on a daily basis, <laughs> you know, you need to stop worrying that, that there's something further wrong with you. Uh, need to get over the frustrations that you don't know how to fix yourself, how to make yourself just feel normal um, is really kind of a challenge. So coming back to coronavirus on top of everything, it really kind of didn't help. Now I was booked in to see a gastroenterologist. Um, I was on an eight month waiting list and that was the middle of last year. Um, I've spoken to doctors since, kind of got emotional about the whole thing because I don't know how to heal myself. I'm 31, I should feel alive and happy and wonderful and healthy, but most of the time I don't. <laughs> so um, they decided to uh, try and bring my appointment forward and then coronavirus hit and nothing is going forward whatsoever. So it's like a, a year and a half on since um, the appointment was booked for me and I still haven't had the appointment and there is no future date set at the moment for when that appointment may actually occur. <laughs> so those are my updates. Now with regard to how I've been managing this, um, I was put back on a Omeprazole, which I took twice a day for uh, a good two months straight, which managed to calm down things after the initial, after this year's um, sort of major event, I'll say. And then a few months later, I, you know, I'd sort of managed to wean myself off it a little bit, but then I started getting new symptoms. Again, I've had these symptoms before, but I started getting new symptoms on a regular basis. And that was this pounding heartbeat feeling. Now the pounding heartbeat, if you guys haven't had it, which I'm sure you have if you're watching, is kind of where you feel your heartbeat um, heavily and sometimes more quickly, even after doing tiny little things. So for me, it's walking upstairs. <laughs> sometimes it's getting up off the sofa. Um, and basically it seems to be a problem with excess gas or something trapped within you that affects the vagus nerve as well, which comes down through your esophagus and joins sort of everything in your body. And it's sort of pressures built around the hernia and things that kind of, I guess, affect that feeling inside your body. So um, sort of walking upstairs gives you this pounding heart feeling and it's really unnerving. <laughs> um, but obviously it makes you feel like you don't want to walk uphill or you don't want to walk too quickly. And this was happening on a daily basis and it was getting to the point where um, if I 
ate certain things, then this would occur within five or 10 minutes after it. So again, I was put on um, omeprazole at a higher dose for twice a day, and I was taking this twice daily, and this wasn't working. Every time I phone, they say, well, judging from your symptoms and the things that you've told me and the tests you've had done and the x-rays and everything that you've had done, we don't think there's anything wrong with your heart. Um, obviously, it, it's not constant and it's not always there and it doesn't get worse. Um, sometimes I can run up a hill with no problems. Sometimes I can't even walk up my own stairs. So it's more likely to be something um, further down in the digestive tract that is causing this irritation and causing this inflammation and all this trouble. So in general, at the moment, I'm on a cycle of good days and bad days, and this seems to happen over a period of weeks or months. So at the moment, I'm coming to the end of a good month. So actually, this last month, I've pretty much had no real symptoms. I've been able to enjoy foods that I usually can't eat. I've had chocolate. I've had crisps. I've had tomatoes. <laughs> it's been an exciting month, and I've honestly made the most of it, but I can tell now that I'm coming to the end of that, and I need to start reining back in on the foods that I allow myself to have, because things are getting worse. Before that, that was a period of about three months, maybe even five or six months, where I'd been really, really bad, and that encompassed the bad spell that I talked about, the actual event, and the months after that, where I was in obviously some sort of recovery from that event, that it was just horrendous. Every single day was a challenge. So I'm going to go over a few things in the coming weeks that I've tried, that I've had success with. I'll give you an update in another video on um, my current eating habits on good days and bad days, how this affects whether I eat certain things or do certain activities, things that I found that help and hinder with regards to exercise, seating, um, times of day you eat, sleeping, and everything I do to try and manage the symptoms as and when they appear. And hopefully, if you guys haven't tried some of these things, they might work for you. As I've said, I have no expertise. And if you guys are struggling with this, the only thing that I can give you is, don't worry, you're not alone. <laughs> And it doesn't actually last forever. It does seem to come and go in cycles. It's just a case of working out what you can do and when, and taking it easy and being kind to yourself on those days where you can't do as much, on those months and weeks where it feels overwhelming, just looking after yourself and not worrying about what's going on. Because the more you worry, the worse things get. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed my little update on <laughs> how things are going, where things are. As I said, I'm hoping now to be able to um, update this channel as regularly as possible. I'll try and put videos out every single week if I can, and I'll show you guys everything that I do, eat, make, and how that keeps me sane. <laughs> If you have comments, questions, suggestions, as always, leave them in the messages below. I'm so sorry I haven't replied to all the messages on here. Um, I really haven't checked this channel for the last two years, so it's really difficult to keep on top of everything. But if I can, and I see your messages, I will try my best to reply and help you out in any way I can. Stay happy, healthy, safe. I hope your symptoms are giving you easy days. And I will see you next week in another Cutie Pie Inside Out video. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.